welcome to your Still Hope's annual memorial service today. Uh, I am Rich, your chaplain here at Still Hope's, and I am co-leading today's memorial service with Dr. Stuart Rawson, who's also our marketing director. And we are very pleased and lucky to have assisting us with music today, Diane Cote and Bob Mahalski from Life Engagement. And also handling the camera today is the Life Engagement Director, Michelle Raven, and assisted extremely well by Debbie Capen Cooper, my assistant. We've sent out and tried to arrange for everyone to have a service booklet for today's service so you can follow along. If by some reason that didn't happen or there's a problem with it, just please pray along with us as we go through this service. Let us begin. We meet in the name of Jesus Christ, who died and was raised to the glory of God the Father. Grace and mercy be with you. We will walk together before the Lord in the land of the living. We look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the living things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Today we come together to remember before God our brothers and sisters who have walked through the doorway of death into the life to come, to give thanks for their lives and to comfort one another in our grief. The familiar prayer of St. Francis was requested by Francis Tupper. Let us pray. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord of the hopeful, we bless your name for those in every generation who have lived with their lives towards the sunrise, who have refused to be content with things as they were, who have possessed the love which believers, believes and hopes all things and never fails, whose eager eyes have welcomed each new ray of light here and been gladdened by the daybreak yonder and still look for the glorious light of that perfect day when your glory shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. Inspire us with their expectancy and make us both to labor for and to depend confidently on you to grant us those things for which we pray with the trust of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. We seem to have given them back to you, dear God, who gave them to us. Yet as you did not lose them in the giving, so we have not lost them by their return. Not as the world gives do you give, O lover of souls. What you give you do not take away, for what is yours is ours always if we are yours. And life is eternal, and love is immortal, and death is only a horizon. And a horizon is nothing save the limit of our sight. Lift us up, O God, that we may see further. Cleanse our eyes that we may see more clearly. Draw us closer to yourself that we may know ourselves nearer to our beloved who are with you. And while your Son makes ready for us, prepare us for that happy place, that where they are and you are, we may also be through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
poem found in the wallet of Tucker Dana, a former resident of Still Hopes. Miss me, but let me go. When I come to the end of the road and the sun has set for me, I want no rights in a gloom-filled room. Why cry for a soul set free? Miss me a little, but not too long. And with your head bowed low, remember the love that we once shared. Miss me, but let me go. For this is a journey that we all must take, and each must go alone. It's all part of the Master's plan. A step on the road to home. When you are lonely and sick of heart, go to the friends we know and bury your sorrows in doing good deeds. Miss me, but let me go. The first song of Isaiah was a favorite of Jack Mormon. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from whence does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he keeps Israel. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not smite you by night, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in. From this time forth, forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Hebrews. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All of us are here today because of love. We love someone whom, whose life we remember, cherish, and grieve right now. And what I hope you've heard is that they are now part of that great cloud of witnesses that watch and that cheer us on. Every time we do something that is in accord with God's will and we wonder, I wonder if God saw that. We can't hear them, but they're cheering. When we live according to God's will and show the grace of God to those around us, they cheer. When we are having a down day, they're rooting for us. It's important to remember those things. We live and move and have our being surrounded by the love of God. We live in a world that is transitory. We will live, we will die. What is permanent and never changes is love. Life may end, love never does. But in fact, life never ends, it's transformed. God's love is forever. This is going to be aired around All Saints Day, part of what part of the church calls the Tritium, All Hallows Eve or Halloween, All Souls Day and All Saints Day, three days in a row, where we remember those who have gone before and we venerate those whose lives especially spoke to us that we may call saints. When I grew up in a church called All Saints in San Diego, California, there were stained glass windows depicting all the saints. And I know there are old stories about somebody saying, do you know who the saints are? Well, they're the people the lights shine through, which was true for me growing up. It's especially true because that is what a saint does. They shine the light of God and the love of God and the light of Christ through themselves into a world all around them. And I hope you've known saints in your life. Some of the names that we're going to remember today I consider to be saints. And I hope all of them are considered by one of you to be a saint. Every year, that great cloud of witnesses grows and grows and there are more and more saints in heaven and more people whose lives are examples to us of how to live, how to deal with adversity, how to deal with joy, how to go on when things get difficult. And so as we grieve both their lives and grieve the life that we had with them, and this year in particular, we also grieve some things that this COVID virus may have taken from us temporarily. We grieve those things, like the ability to come here to the chapel for this service, like the ability to see one another that we love in close proximity, like before COVID, not wearing a mask all the time. We grieve many things. This is a service about dealing with our grief. But one thing that is constant throughout our lives is God. I love the 121st Psalm. That's the Psalm of the Diocese of Upper South Carolina in the Episcopal Church. I lift up my eyes to the hills from where is my help to come. It comes from the Lord. 
Another psalm that we hear a lot at funerals is the 23rd psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And in there, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. No matter where we are in this life, God is with us. Whether we can sense his immediate presence or not, God is with us. And today, while it's kind of bittersweet, we're going to remember out loud the names of those in our community who have moved on to the next life. I want you to remember also with love and joy that those lives are to be celebrated. Because they're now, the, the torch that they carry has been passed to all of you. And as long as we remember them, they're never gone. The good and the amazing are always with us. Always with us. I think at the end of the age, at some point, there may be some kind of reckoning with our creator. Whether it's a judgment or not depends. I think one of the questions we may be asked, so study now, it's going to be on the final. I really think God is going to look at us and say, how was it? Did you live the life I gave you? Did you enjoy those things? The sunrises, the sunsets, the trees, my creation, your fellow humans. Did you live the life of abundant love that I wanted you to live? That torch has now been passed to us. But remember the examples of all those who have gone before who did live that abundant, full life, who loved and laughed and cried when it was appropriate and showed great courage and leaned on God's grace when they needed to because his grace is always sufficient. Always sufficient. We give our all to God. God's grace makes that enough and more than enough. So today, as we move on in prayer, that's what I hope you'll remember. The joy, the love, the, the abundant life that we're all called to live and to enjoy and to live and laugh and love and to do justice and love mercy and walk humbly with our God. Amen. Now in the assurance of eternal life given at baptism, let us proclaim our faith, saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that keeping in glad remembrance those who have gone before, who have stood by us and helped us, who have cheered us by their sympathy and strengthened us by their example, we may seize every opportunity of life and rejoice in the promise of a glorious resurrection with them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Richard Gribble, Billy DeBose, Helen Cole, Evelyn Roish, Virginia Winfield, Wyndham Manning, Levy Canova, Paul Lunsford, Marvin Thompson, Quay Jordan, Ann McCants, Ann Beasley, Mary Fuller, And we pray for Linda Mahalson, Donald Clark, Ann Burr, Betty Smith, Catherine Hicks, Betty Hoffman, Glenn Hughes, Fred Kraft, Frank Bubber Wyman, Jesse Hopkins, Ellen Wolner, Jane Lester, Frank Piazza, Jenny Tuller, John Kirkland, Julianne Rope, Alcee Holland, Betty Schuler, Faye Brooks, Frank Griffin, Sis Rast, Ruth Boots, Hal Duvall, Francis Tupper, Fred Williams, Francis Laborde, Gary Lee, Charles Green, Bishop Charles Duvall, Ken Morris. As we remember these, our brothers and sisters, whose names we have called, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the resurrection, and I am the life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn, and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raise the dead to life. Give to our brothers and sisters eternal life. Hear us, Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our brothers and sisters to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our brothers and sisters were washed washed in baptism, and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give them fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Lord. They were nourished with your body and blood. Grant them a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our brothers and sisters. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Hear Hear us, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our brothers and sisters who were reborn by water and the Spirit and holy baptism. Hear us, Lord. Grant that their deaths may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Hear us, Lord. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Father of all, we pray to you for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest, that light perpetual shine upon them. May the souls of the departed who may remember today in the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Death Be Not Proud, a poem by John Donne. Death be not proud, though some have called thee mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so. For those whom thou thinkest thou dost overthrow, die not. Poor death, nor yet thou canst kill me. From rest and sleep, which but thy pictures be, much pleasure. Then from thee much more must flow, and soon as our best men with thee do go, rest of their bones and souls delivery. Thou art slave to fate, chance, kings, and desperate men, and dost with poison, war, and sickness dwell. 
and poppy or charms can make us sleep as well and better than thy stroke. Why swellest thou then? One short sleep past, we wake eternally, and death shall be no more. Death, thou shalt die.